Well, at least there were only nine swords this year. I mean, last year was 54. What the fuck was going on then? I hope I've gotten through to some people. I hope my advice, my advice of don't make any swords actually p changed the... Hello everyone, Laurie Moon here and welcome to Laurie Moon's Top 20 Accessory Design Contest Entries of 2016. Now, just a disclaimer, this is my personal Top 20, so I'm sorry if I've missed anything out, but in my opinion, these are the best designs submitted for this year. And also keep in mind that this year, it's just the US server. There's no Indonesia, France, Brazil, or EU. It's not a global accessory design contest, it's just US. So there's a lot less entries. I think there was 87 this year. And this is my top 20 out of those 87. So without further ado, here's number 20. Number 20 on the list is Shatiru's Paper Plane. I'm uncertain if the scarf is a part of the accessory. If not, the paper plane in hand alone might be a little too basic. I still love its attacks, especially the hold strong in which you can glide for a short time at the cost of some mana. Pat Scyther's Bubble Maker at number 19. This is the perfect example of what I've always said. You can have accessories that act as swords, whacking the enemy about, but it doesn't have to be a sword. This one is a giant bubble maker in which bubbles can work at close range or long distance to hit the enemy. Baseball Bat. Yes, Selenry has continued on the legacy of an accessory I've always wanted in the game since the accessory design contest in 2013 where I nearly submitted a baseball bat accessory. Then in 2015, I chose Kuran's design as my tied number one entry, which I later regretted as I found out it was a complete rip from the Kill the Kill anime, which I was unaware of at the time. But today, more baseball. And this time it's more explicit than ever with an actual baseball used for a lot of the attacks and needing to get timings absolutely perfect for bonus damage. I want a baseball accessory, Cyberstep. I want it. Come on. What more do you want? It's, it's, it's a log, mate. It's a log. I'm serious. This is all that was submitted. I mean, sure, I feel this accessory probably won't win the contest. Look at this picture for Mantep's sake. It's just taken from the internet, surely. And it doesn't even have any attacks listed. But despite all of that said, I like the idea. And that's all that matters in this contest and all I'm basing this list on. A great idea and a funny, cool or interesting design. So simple, your uh, simple design is simply great. Well done. Rescue Hose. Seems like the opposite of rescuing. Look at all these attacks. Lethal sprays of water. Good lord! I do really like this accessory though. It's got the humour of the water gun accessory, except it has a full list of attacks, not just a special attack like the water gun. At number 15 is Sinino's Punishment School. And the name says it all. Kids don't get to school quickly enough, and the traffic warden comes and punishes them. And for some reason, they also have a lunchbox. Is the traffic warden also a student? Like, well, it doesn't matter. It's relevant in some way, so I guess it works. With attacks working in sync with hitting them over the head with the sign, throwing lunch snacks at the enemy, and even a cool hold attack where you can become the wheel of a school bus, I find this accessory really fun, humorous, but also a little bit badass if you really think about it. I mean, beating up kids to get them to go to school. Lesson learnt. Stay in school, kids. Reiko's design is the Arctic Fishing Set and includes this neat rod and basket combo. With expected attacks such as attacking the enemy with the fishing rod, I'd just like to point out that the strong combo of this accessory is the same as the weak hold from my accessory design this year, but I'll talk more about mine later. There is also throwing fish towards the enemy to get unexpected ravenous creatures to attack the enemy for food. Look at this, an eagle swoops down. A cat? Is that a cat? I think it's a cat, runs over towards the enemy. It's just like the punishment school. It's funny to most people, but I personally detect a hint of badassness in doing something quirky like that. Divine Supremacy. I really like the look of this accessory. A feathered cape with a flaming hand. Also, the eyes flame up too, like the Chaos and Heretics Hold X. I would definitely rank this accessory a little bit higher if it wasn't for its overpowered looking attacks. I mean, maybe they're not overpowered, but it just looks a little bit too intense for me. I mean, look at this, a gigantic fiery glow, the flames becoming a dagger, scythe, wings, bow, Christ, Mantep. Pick one weapon the flames can metamorphosize into. 
This is beginning to look like a second Empress Blade, which I'm thankful every single day that it hasn't been released into the US server yet. Toy Guppy's sound burst is a stereo system held loose on the shoulder, a boombox that only the coolest of kids can handle, says the description. And look at this idle pose, not idle as in standing around, idle as in a celebrity that people look up and idolize. With attacks such as hitting the enemy with the boombox and unleashing sound waves, this accessory gives a slightly more intimate edge than the demolition guitar accessory that already exists in the game. Now here's another accessory I personally don't think will make it into the game. It's just far too complex, but it is totally badass with several different siege contraptions, such as rams, ballistas, and catapults. The amount of detail put into all of the attacks is unreal as well. All the different effects, accessory similarities to ones already existing in the game like the skeletal bow or the Artemis arrow, I would have ruled this accessory off my top 20, nay my top 40 list entirely if it wasn't for this comment by Fishy Fish, the accessory designer. I know this is a challenge to me and developer. If you like to see this accessory, this design may be too complex. I personally want to challenge the limit of what my design is capable of. I like to have new ideas, so by any reason, if this is excessive, Cyberstep should feel free to make changes. This is just the concept. At the end of the day, even though I think it's unlikely this accessory will make it through, I appreciate the dedication to push the boundaries of Get Out 2 expectations, and this is why it's ranked 11 on my personal top 20. The Ace Crustacea by The Ace Crustacea by Kizero. Number 10 is The Ace Crustacea by Chris Number 10 is The Ace Crustacea by Kizero. I'm sorry if I uh, got that name wrong. And you may be thinking to yourself already, a crab claw has been done. Hello? Yeah. True, that's the Zodiac Cancer Core, which has always been a red ball in the mega draws, not very accessible to the average player. This accessory, unlike that one, doesn't draw the parallel between a crab living in the water. It stays more grounded by just happening to look like a claw, but in actuality simply being a mechanical device capable of lots of grapple-based attacks and violent vice locks. This accessory was originally ranked higher on my list, until I caught wind that the chained claw accessory already exists in the prime market for 400 crescent. Although I think Kazero's is much cooler in colour, design, and being more closely likened to a crab than this prime market version, and unfortunately still has a similar equivalent, which is why this design is only number 10 instead of number 5 or so. There, I said it, it was around number 5 originally. Kazero, I'm sorry. Aquatic Remedy, a beautiful name for a beautiful accessory. And I know what you're thinking. Laurie, you had a sound system stereo in number 12. Why is there headphones in number 10? I just really like the idea of having soothing water and fish be the theme alongside headphones. From this accessory's moveset, it describes, but does not show, fish following your character and protecting you from attacks. The weak hold protecting you from a single attack, much like the Chaos Heretic Stronghold, the special attack summoning sharks and dolphins respectively. In a fighting game, it's hard to come up with an accessory more linked towards peace than combat, but I think this accessory hits the nail on the head, with various fish fighting to protect you and making your character seem as if they don't want to fight. A wonderful design, Blockhead 1. Don't get yourself down with this comment of the best I could think of. This is a great idea. Carpentry 101 by Naaman is in 8th place. With a hammer and saw in hand, and funny attacks such as throwing a hammer like a knife, putting wet cement on the ground, and sliding pieces of furniture across the ground, this accessory harnesses all aspects of construction, as well as basic household establishment. Even making a coffin. What kind of carpenter is this? W one minute you're making a house, next minute you're making a grave! I mean, who the fuck? Atticus's Road Shredder is a gigantic spiked wheel and jumper cable, with attacks like electrocuting the enemy with the jumper cable, and somehow riding the wheel around in a comical fashion, this accessory is the pinnacle of originality. Who could have thought to use a giant wheel as a weapon? Not me. Oh, fucking hell. The roads are no longer safe, and that chaos is now a weapon. Pretty good description there. Laurie Moon put a fucking sword in- Guys, come and see the- No, 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 no. Stop right there. That's- that's what I thought too. I thought, that sword looks so cool, but bottom line is a sword's a sword. I'm not gonna give a shit. But wait! 
What's this? Magnificent cards, a stance, throwing cards, spawning, warping, a king NPC? Card explosion, strapped to a card, holy crap, the list just goes on and on. There is so much detail and care put into designing this accessory that just like Flame of the Forest in number 28, I can't just pass this off as another fucking sword and not mention it somehow. But as one thing turned to another, I really like its moves. The flurry of cards, the king NPC, and ultimately it reached the number 7 position. Maybe if you used a cane instead of a sword, just something minor like that, I'd rank it slightly higher. But despite it being a sword, it still gets a ranking as high as this. Great design, Eternal. Taking all the aspects of a stealthy assassin, Kenshiro Kei's design is not kunai's, not shuriken's or anything of the sort, it's this neat little knitting set. And I ain't talking about your grandma! He's taken something kinda quaint and made it into something totally badass. Knitting needle knives. Check. Hog tying the enemy. Check. Is that, is that a blade? Is that a fucking blade? Quote unquote, not a blade. Yes! Yet another accessory that doesn't have detailed images of its moveset? Look guys. I know it might help you to have that sort of thing to actually win the contest, but personally I think that's unfair. It doesn't stop it from being a good idea or design. It just makes it easier for the developers to know exactly what moves they're making, I guess. But anyway, number 4 is the Police Cap by Pradeep Don. I find it very reminiscent of the Combat Operations accessory, but harnessing a more public police approach rather than an undercover operations style, with a police baton, handcuffs, and a similar helicopter or plane support attacks from a radio. I love that all the items used on this belt can be visibly seen when they're not in use. Now just before I get into my top three, I would like to do a little plug of my own accessory entry for this contest. Um, it's an accessory called the Wilderness Talent. It is a Scout Master's jacket with badges of fire making, fishing, and wood cutting. And all of those skills are harnessed throughout this accessory with its attacks. And there's also a little cute kiwi that sits on your shoulder. And this kiwi has various attacks, uh, whether it be uh, hitting enemies with its beak, or turning into multiple kiwis, or a giant golden kiwi with magnificent golden wings. I could have probably used a squirrel or some other woodland creature to be more fitting with the Scoutmaster theme, but I wanted it to be a kiwi because I'm originally from New Zealand and I wanted it to be a little bit of me, my personal, uh, it's the national animal of New Zealand, the flightless kiwi, and just thought it would be cute, nice little addition. But I won't talk about my accessory any longer, here is my top three of the accessory design contest that 26 fuck, just show- Here's another accessory which doesn't have a moveset, but it's an awesome idea nonetheless, so I'm going to include it as such. It's a conductor's baton, which is used to orchestrate frogs. However, the description mentions that this only works most of the time. It goes on to say below that sometimes rogue frogs can appear, which can spit their tongues out in random directions, run away, or sing and scream bad notes. I love the idea of having another accessory in game like the Dr. Diaper Core Dice accessories which have randomly occurring attacks. Sometimes it could be completely successful and deal huge damage, and sometimes it could backfire and harm the player. It's not the most practical of accessories, but when you've been playing for as long as I have, sometimes you don't care about winning, you just want to have fun. And this accessory looks like a heck of a laugh. Keista, I want your accessory. My cousin with the same surname, not really, Moonless in second place with the clumsy waiter accessory design. With a tray and a towel, as well as a hilarious shaking effect, the attacks revolve around involuntarily spilling things onto the enemy, whether it be glasses, mugs, or accidentally handing a very hot tray over or spilling burning mug contents. With so many unique ways to attack by coming across as an idiot, I can imagine this to be a really fun accessory to play around with, either to fool your friends or to muck about, or to seriously win a battle in a hilarious fashion. This is yet another accessory I'd be really happy to see put into Get Out 2. And holy mother of fuck, it's a sword! Has this been Sogen Moon's top 20 all along? No! No! It may be a sword, but it's a sushi sword. 
and with little to no attacks actually using the blade, I link in this accessory to my 2013 entry, The Lethal Cuisine. The knife is merely there for decorative purposes, people, as a chef, but it is not used very much. With my old accessory being catered more towards European cooking, this one is more towards Japanese style food, by cooking up koi fish as its signature dish. A giant noodle bowl, turning enemies into a sushi temporarily, and gigantic counter chopping boards, this accessory would be a dream come true with comical yet totally badass Japanese cuisine attacks. Champlu, you've done it. This is my number one accessory. Not tied like last year. This is what I fucking want! I WANT THAT ACCESSORY! And that's it! Thank you very much for tuning in to my Accessory Design Contest 2016 Top 20 list. And I wish the best of luck to all of the entries. I don't know what the results are going to be, but when the results are announced, I will do a little wrap-up video talking about the results, what ones I like, and maybe a change in views of some of the accessory designs since I've done this video. So subscribe, stay tuned, and when that video comes out you'll get a notification and it'll, it'll be there on your YouTube homepage because you've subscribed to me. So thanks very much for watching. And if you haven't watched it already, I actually do have a top 40 to 21 list right here. You can click it and check it out. There were just so many designs that I liked this year that I had to do a separate video and just go through all of my um, 40 to 21. That's it's, it's within the top 50% of all the designs. So yeah, thanks very much for watching. Probably could have um, scripted this video a little bit better. It was just every, it was just me talking about whatever first came into my mind. <sighs> Thank you for watching.